This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. Someone said to me the other day, or they said it on Twitter or Facebook or something, they said, go note the transformation of this podcast since inception until today. Now, I've not done that note. I really don't care to listen to everything that I said in 2013, 14, 15, 16, etc. I generally know what I said. I'm pretty consistent. I think what this person was getting at was perhaps my tone or my way of interviewing people. And it was a compliment. He was saying that I had gotten better. That's the fun thing about doing a podcast. You do get better at talking, at interviewing, at listening to anyone. I'm pretty well convinced that with almost no preparation, a few minutes, I can get into a conversation with anyone on this planet and make it watchable, make you want to listen. Not because I'm all that. Just practice, 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 because everyone has an interesting story. Now, today, I'm not doing an interview. Today, I'm going to do a little bit of a rant, a monologue, but everyone does have an interesting story. And so the key, the main job is to pull out of them what's interesting, not just ask rote questions that everyone asks, but to find out something deeper, to get people moved That's exciting. Get at what most people won't ask or don't know to ask. And look, I got to tell you, if you're out there listening right now and you've never done anything like this, talk. Get people to listen. Try it. Get involved. Do something different. Find what you love and find other people. Get them involved. Have conversations. Record it. Get feedback. It's the best thing you can do. You will absolutely have a blast. That's my opening salvo, just kind of a side tangent, something positive. Now, I believe what will follow next is also positive, but it depends on your frame of reference, your point of view, your vantage from where you sit. I want to talk fundamentals in a slightly different way. Fundamentals would be all the information that's constantly flowing around, whatever it might be. Politics, elections, Fed reports, economics, markets. What's the best bet on OPEC and what they'll decide next? All of this kind of stuff, vaccinations, COVID, everything becomes fundamentals. Information. Another way to say fundamentals. Information. Well, my friends, there is too much information to do shit with it except to go bloody freaking crazy. There is no way to use all of this information. And I'm just like anybody. Sometimes I want to play ball. I want to get in there. I want to punch a little. I mean, take, for example, the last two years, COVID, vaccinations. We now know beyond a shadow of a doubt that vaccinations do not stop the spread of COVID. Now consider that. What does that mean? Lockdowns are bullshit. Masks are bullshit. Punishing people who are unvaccinated is bullshit. It's all just a mess. We're all going to get the damn thing. We're all going to get the damn thing. So I support anyone who wants to take the vax or not take the vax. It's on you. But we sure as hell should not be arguing about it. It's a waste of time. Someone might say that's a political opinion or whatever. It's really not. But what could I do with that information if I was thinking about the markets? Whether I had a pro-vaccine position or an anti-vaccine position, I know some of the big pharma companies have gone up. I guess that means they're a buy. You see where I'm going here? There's too much information. There's too much flow. It's impossible. What I've just described in the last few minutes 
is this nonstop debate getting ratcheted up. I'll give you another example. Look at America. Right now in America, we've got something called critical race theory. And we want to essentially divide people up by race again. This is where America's headed. That's completely crazy. That's my opinion. Maybe somebody else thinks it's not completely crazy. But what do you do with it? What do you do with it? You sure as hell can't make money with it. You can't trade off it. We've just got a nonstop information flow. Opinions, 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 opinions. Where are the facts? We can't agree on the facts anymore. Everyone must realize that by now, this constant information flow is often just opinions, like some of the opinions I've expressed today. Now, to me, they're important opinions. I like to think that I take grounded views that are probably good if I was the leader of a country, but I'm not. And the leaders of many countries today take ass backwards decisions and they make ass backwards policy. Again, what's the point? How do you navigate all of this? How do you even know what's true? Here's another one. Coins on top of coins on top of coins. I'm talking blockchain, crypto. Okay, Bitcoin is clearly something right now. Clearly, it's something. Does that mean every one of the other thousands and thousands of coins or whatever are something? Well, anyone that has a pulse or was old enough to know realized what happened during the dot-com bubble. Add a dot-com and everything went to the moon until it didn't. Am I making a prediction about crypto? No. I'm showing you again how difficult it is to make predictions looking at fundamental information. I just went ahead and said, look at all these thousands of coins. And I made a contrast to the dot-com bubble. That could be argued as my point of view. Now, how useful is my point of view for trading? Because if coins keep going up and people love them, maybe the situation will be entirely different than the dot-com bubble. You see where I'm going here? Trying to analyze the information, trying to make predictions, the information otherwise known as fundamentals, the fundamentals otherwise known as information, man, it's a hard slog. And again, this is nonstop. It's coming at us fast and furious. Back to my main point, where is the truth? I'm coming at this from a trend-following perspective. There are very few things in modern life that are true. But right now, the price at the moment I'm speaking of the S&P, of Bitcoin, of gold, of Apple computer, these are facts. Absolutely, they're facts. They're numbers. You can't look at the price of Apple on XYZ day and say, well, I really don't think it's that number and have anybody even engage you in a conversation. Now, outside of something like a market price, people will look at things that we used to think were facts. We used to think in America that only women could have a baby. That has changed. They now call the people who can have a baby birthing persons. I'm not making this up. It's completely true. Birthing persons. Because men can now have a baby. Now, of course, men can't have a baby. But in this new world, where things that used to be facts are not facts, and information flow is nonstop, propaganda is nonstop, the fundamentals are nonstop. Again, back to my point. Where is truth? Look, as of right now, they don't have life extension. We're going to live a certain amount of time. So where do we put our focus? Do you really want to go out there and debate people and waste your time that are trying to tell you or me or whoever that men can have babies? Yes, we probably hear it and we think that's crazy. But how much time of your life do you want to donate to argue and debate with mentally deformed people that think men can have babies? How much time do you want to spend doing that? I don't want to spend any time doing it. 
Now, I'm sure somewhere here or there I've made a post, but I don't want to let my mind get into this kind of thing. Again, it's nonstop. It's the matrix. Really, I think that's really what we are in the middle of. We're in the matrix of information. So I guess what I'm really proposing today is the diet. Because if you can look at things that are real and work with those and put aside the things that are not real, not focus on that stuff, well, hell, that's a much better life, isn't it? I've been having regular conversations with Larry Height. And he said one the other day, said this nugget. I mean, he says a lot of nuggets if you talk to Larry for 90 minutes, but he said this one nugget. He said, I spelled money with an F, freedom. That ties back into the whole idea of the price. Because you see, what we're really looking for is freedom. We're looking to be away from the people that tell you men can have babies. We all want to get as far away from that as possible. Now, some people don't want to get far away from that. And I would dare to predict that people that want to live in that Kool-Aid bubble probably aren't going to have the most interesting life. It's a lot of wasted time. I mean, there's men, there's women. There are exceptions on the edges, on the outliers to that. But there's men and women. That's basically what we got. And it's worked that way for a really, really long time. If you want to debate that, somebody else wants to debate that, go ahead. But back to Larry's point, back to my point with price, back to finding out what is really true. The market prices are true. Okay, if market prices are true, what can we do with them? Well, we can sure as hell trade them. We can trade the market prices. We can look at the momentum of market prices and trade them with a trend following approach. And if we do that and we make money, we're back to Larry Height's point, we can have freedom. Like, what are you trying to make money for? What are you going to do with the money? The reason you want the money, at least in my humble opinion, the reason that you want the money is to avoid having to say yes, sir, to an asshole for your whole life. That's what you're trying to avoid. Back again to my main points. I'm being redundant on purpose. What's the truth that we can see? Prices. All the other stuff, the debates, all these political things that I'm bringing up or whatever. We can't do anything with them. There's going to be mental patients out there that want to fight about this stuff nonstop. They don't want freedom. They want a daddy. They want to be tucked in every night and kissed on the forehead by some older man that they don't know. They get off on that. That's their thing. People that want freedom know that that's twisted. They don't want any part of it. They just want their freedom. In my conversation with Larry the other day, he said something about Commodities Corporation, which is a place that I guess you could call a collection of traders back in the day, 70s, 80s, 90s, a collection of traders with a certain amount of money that was used to fund new traders. Jack Schwager's first book, Market Wizards. Many of those traders were funded by Commodities Corporation or worked for Commodities Corporation. So just a fantastic track record of success. Amos Hostetter, who was the original kind of technical trend-following guy there, unfortunately died early in an auto accident. He was a trend-following trader. That was his thing. And I'm sure he influenced a lot of these great names that we talk about today. A quick side tangent, if you Google him, just to show you how successful Amos Hostetter was and probably would have been if he did not die young, his son, and I'm assuming using some of his father's fortune from the 70s, went on to become a multi-billionaire. Amos Hostetter Jr., I believe. Not in trading, though in the cable TV business. How crazy is that, right? We can go down all these different interesting paths. John Henry, he owns the Red Sox and the Liverpool football team. He's made billions of dollars off that. But to get the money to buy those sports teams, trend-following trader. And what does that mean? It means he didn't look at anything except the price. So there was all kinds of debates in the 70s and the 80s when John Henry was trading. And I'm sure John Henry had his political opinions about things during the day, during his time. And maybe they were entirely different than mine. 
were entirely different than Bill Dunn's or Ed Sakota's. Who cares? But he used the one thing that he could know was true. The price, the momentum of price. Price moves, it persists, you get trends. And if you can capture those trends, you can make a hell of a lot of money and you don't need to have a damn job. Job is a four letter word. Who the hell wants a job? All you want, back to my point, back to Larry's point, all you want is freedom. Money equals freedom. That's it. Now, of course, if you want to buy a nice new car, money equals that too. But the number one thing is freedom. Now, I just deviated a little bit from my commodities corp story because there was more to it. What Larry was telling me because he was funded early on by commodities corp. And Larry made the point to me, and this is really interesting. Commodities Corp back in the day, kind of in a way, a version of the turtle traders, you know, a pocket of money funding traders, but they paid their fundamental traders more than their technical traders. Let that sink in. They paid their fundamental guys more than their trend following guys. Because I guess if you were a fundamental guy, you had to have the right degree. You had to have the right insight, the right knowledge. And that was harder than being a trend-following trader. Now, I don't know for sure, but I'm willing to bet that over the last 30, 40, 50 years, the trend-following traders that came out of Commodities Corporation, including Amos Hostetter, are the ones that made the big damn money. I know sometimes I can take you on a circular path. It might seem like these things are unconnected. To talk about something like vaccines in 2021, to talk about a trader who died in the 1970s, to bring up fundamentals, to bring up information flow, to bring up crypto, new coins. It's all connected. Because you know what we're all trying to do? Well, we're not all trying to do this, but we should all be trying to do it because this is the way life really works. We're looking for, again, the freedom. We're looking to use prices, i.e. trend following. But it's about the big move. Because if you can get a couple big moves, if you can get some big hits, if you can get some home runs, that's it. You've got your freedom. And it's not about making 1% a month. It's not about all this retirement bullshit they tell you. It's not about that. If you want to get rich, it's going to be about big hits, period. Now, if you can get a big hit every year or multiple big hits, you might end up a billionaire. But a couple really nice swings, a couple really well-hit balls, so to speak, will set you up for life. And you will never have to worry about paying the bills again. And when you don't have to worry about paying the bills then you're at freedom. Then you can do whatever the fuck you like. And damn it, that feels good. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash, or just trying to make a lot of money. Trend following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. 